Hi designers, this is Rebecca and this is your group critique for your assignment one design brief and logo. I just wanted to start by letting you know that I know that this was not easy. <laughs> it's really hard to design a logo that is so intricate and full of extra stuff um, that we're not used to designing. Um, so I'm just really proud of all of you. You did such a fantastic job. They're gorgeous. And this was a lot of work for a first assignment. So way to go, everybody. You're incredible. Um, so let's just go over the, uh, the specs real fast and make sure that you covered everything with the stuff that you turned in. So here's the assignment over overview. You were to create a unique brand identity system for either a fictitious traveling circus, carnival, or performer. You were to incorporate the type with this, you were to incorporate type with the symbol to create a simple yet bold logo design that communicates the essence of the business. Uh, the project guidelines was to create the, de the design briefs. You all did really great there. We're not gonna go over the design briefs in, the, in this critique, but I'm very proud of all of you. You're all so professional, I love it. Uh, we will talk about the logo design though, so that we needed to conduct initial research and choose a topic, which you all did phenomenally. Uh, research any competitors. I'm not sure. Yeah, some of you, I, I did see that in your presentation. Uh, you needed to create a mood board or an image collage. Uh, you needed to draw rough sketches for your symbols, illustrations, and logo type. You need to create three digital design comps, then refine and improve, finalize the one logo, and then apply it to merchandise mockups. The required specs are that you need to create the design brief in a word processing app and then export it as a PDF. You need to create the logos in Illustrator and um, then export it as a PDF. And you may use a maximum of two fonts, may use different style, styles like bold, thin, all caps, etc. And you can only use Victorian inspired, inspired fonts. You can use uh, found images or original self-made illustrations or, and or photos. And you would minimally design your slide presentation. Um, and then for the assignment scope, you were to research mood board and sketch um, and have all of these in your presentations. You were to have three logos, black and white versions and color versions and a concept description. Uh, you were to have one logo with iterations, color placement size and font variations. And uh, the final logo in black and white and full color. You would have two mockups or more for merchandise examples with logos. Uh, for examples, you can have popcorn boxes, a cup, a t-shirt, and I just want to let you know that all of you that made t-shirts, I would purchase and wear those t-shirts. They all turned out so great. It's totally something I would wear. I love it. And then you're going to create a presentation. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. First up today is Martina. Uh, Martina's um, star is Zazzle, and this turned out so beautiful. I love it. I love these um, different iterations. I love that you were able to incorporate your illustration skills and still kind of um, really experiment with typography. You did such a beautiful job. So this turned out so great. Let's keep looking at the next slide here. So here's your final logo choice. And I love the portrait. I love um, the the sort of cameo style of this portrait. I think it's really beautiful and very um, perfect for the, uh, the era. And I think you did a really good job with sort of um, making it more round here. I like that a lot more than uh, this sort of uh, oval shape. I think it looks really nice. And I love the curved text, looks beautiful. And let's look at the color versions. There we go. Oh, beautiful. So, oh, sorry. Um, the color versions are gorgeous. They're, it looks so good. I love this color palette. It's so soft and it's just really perfect. Really fantastic. So um, this looks really neat too with all this extra decoration around it, this framed part. So the only thing I'm seeing, I'm just gonna zoom in here, is that the, um, the kerning, is a little bit off here between the A and the Z. So I think you do need to nudge this Z to the left a bit because it's super tight next to that E and we've got a big old gap here and it's not two separate words, but it's it's such a large gap that it could even be read as two separate words. So let's go ahead and fix that. 
and just nudge that Z to the left a little bit. But everything else looks really fantastic. It's beautiful, really beautiful work. Way to go. Let's look at your comps so everybody can see them because they're awesome. And there's more iterations, beautiful. I love this color palette, it's so gorgeous. Gorgeous, love, 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 love. Great. This is really good too. I'm really happy to see these stipulations. Perfect. And keep going, this looks good. And these are so cute. So when you fix that Z, you will have to redo the comp, but it should be easy, especially if you only linked to the file, but if you didn't, it's okay. That looks awesome. I love that popcorn bucket comp. Good job, way to go. Thank you. Next up is Lauren. Lauren did the half fish, all lady siren Sylvia. And this turned out so great. I love the double drop shadow there. It's really beautiful. Um, and this uh, really pretty um, letter, letter mark that you made. Um, the color is lovely. I love it. It's perfect for a fishy person. <laughs> I really think it turned out beautifully. I love that font too. It's so cool. And then let's look at your mock-ups. Great, love it. I feel like you could even go bigger if you wanted to um, on this cup. You've got lots of white space to work with. Sorry, I keep accidentally selecting the whole slide here. There we go. And I would totally wear the shirt, like I said, I love it. It's fantastic. I really like the scale of the logo as well. And I love um, your letter mark in the up top center of the shirt. I think it looks really cool. And it looks, uh, it's a really great color for the shirt. So let me just look at this a little bit further. I love these flourishes that you added. Beautiful, really neat. Yeah, all of the, um, this looks really nice too. The, the cross of the V and the N is really pretty. And I like how it's touching the I and the R and blended together. That looks gorgeous, really great. So uh, maybe, maybe consider dropping this white out and making that um, completely clear so that the background color comes through because then you would only have a two color process instead of three, which the white is there. Um, but if not, it's no big deal. The other thing is uh, when you print t-shirts, for example, if you were to print something like this, um, they would probably lay a white screen down first anyway of the entire thing so that this blue would look really, would pop and really look like the color it's supposed to look like. So um, it's no big deal if you do keep the white and, and the white looks really good over here on this side too. So um, it's just up to you if, if it's something that uh, you wanna consider. All right, thank you so much, great work. Next up is Taylor. Taylor did the Aerial Angel and this turned out beautifully, Taylor. I love this texture that's in the, te in the font. It looks really nice. You also made a beautiful letter mark over here and the dove is a really great idea, I think. Um, Using that dove and like its relationship with angels is just a lovely symbol. Um, and it's not as obvious as like a halo, but even this A almost has a little halo too. So that's really cool. And I love these flourishes over here. Um, the black of the flourish and the, and the dove looks really wonderful together. And I also think it's cool how like the black and the doves are kind of flatter since they're not three dimensional, but then the text really pops out and does look three dimensional. So it's a really nice touch. It's like the black of the doves is just the drop shadow by itself, you know? So um, with your three dimensional uh, effects of the text popping out, especially including the white layer in there, it just makes the other symbols recede you know, and then makes your text really um, grab our attention. So it's beautiful. Hey, you, you use the intertwine. It looks awesome. So cool. I love that around the E. Ooh, I love it. Looks so good. And I do like this color palette. It's really pretty. Let's go ahead and check out your comps. Yeah, so in the black and white, uh, it does get a little lost in this area here. So you could go gray. Uh, for your top layer of text. So consider that. Um, over here, it's not as bad because we don't have the E and the R. So this is all right, completely black and white. But in a black and white version, gray is allowed. So if you wanted to bring in an, a mid-tone, you can totally do that. And this looks beautiful too. I would wear this shirt. I love it so much. 
And all of you, like, don't be afraid to go really big on these shirts. It's okay. I know that um, usually the, the width of a silk screen is about 12 inches wide, but, uh, you know, that's not always a rule. So if you want to go bigger, you can. And then let's see. Here's your beautiful popcorn bucket. Looks fantastic. I love this on the side. I love it. It's really cool. Way to go, Taylor. Next up is Rihanna. Rihanna did the Magnus Mirage Mind Bending Illusionist, and this turned out so cool. I love this eye illustration. It's really neat. I think it's really cool that the eyeball is looking to the side um, instead of just straight forward, too. It really brings a lot more mystery to it. And uh, yeah, I think you chose the right one. You know, looking at your other um, examples, they were all really good sketches, and but this one turned out really beautifully, as well as the, the changes that you made here. Let me go back a slide um, with, uh, let me go back another one. Oh, okay, there we go. This R is so neat and I do like love a ligature and you know, different letter um, options, but you, because of all this beautiful um, decoration that you added, I think just changing it to a regular R was the right choice. And then you could add this beautiful swash down here which is so gorgeous. Um, and I do love your the. I think that is so cool with that beautiful T. Oh, that script is really sick. And all of these little ornaments are just, they're placed so nicely. I love this extra swoop down here since this line is so thin. And um, I think you did a really nice job of blending your different weights of in 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 the um, ornaments themselves it's really great i almost think you could go a little thicker some somewhere in here maybe with this one i don't know if you tried that but it would sort of balance it out a little bit uh, because we have this beautiful weight in the eyelashes and of the uh the iris here so maybe just adding this one right here to make it as thick as one of these over here just give it a try if it looks if it looks too overpowering, obviously omit it. But I love this color palette. I think it's gorgeous. This looks really nice. Yeah, just the simple version keeping that R. It looks great. This one's really sick. <laughs> this uh, super horizontal version, really nice, really nice option. Yeah, I think uh, going small here, we start to lose some stuff with that scale. So if you had to go small, oops, sorry, I would go with a uh, less ornamental version. And then we'll check out your beautiful comps. Really cool. Really cool. Yeah, that looks nice. And this looks rad. I would wear that as well. I want to order all of these. I think you should all put them on Redbubble and I will go be your first um, customers. <laughs> Thanks so much, Rianu. Way to go. Next up is Alejandro. This turned out so rad. This is the Marvelous Faust. And I love this image that you chose. It's so good for your character here. And this font is beautiful. This turned out so nice. I love that rise. I love this down here. Um, and I, I like that it's not, you know, that it's um, Faust the Marvelous. It, it looks really cool. Uh, and with color, it looks really nice too. Let's go ahead and see some of the other iterations. This is really beautiful. I love this stroke here. And uh, with that color palette, looks really nice. And then we have some vertical orientation versions and the color versions. The color versions look, look even better. Okay, great. And here's your shirt and your sweatshirt. Yeah, I would wear that for sure. I like your colored strings too, a really nice touch. So let's go ahead and go back and look at the logo a bit more. <laughs> So um, in black and white, sorry about that. Let me get out of there. Hey, stop. Stop it. Okay. <laughs> in black and white, it reads really well. Um, these ones down here, the bottom two especially, uh, they feel really well balanced. But then when we go to color, I think that black and white is just a little too, too contrasty for this gold. And um, 
and sepia tone effect that you're using here. So I recommend changing that black to this in these uh, these two colors here that you're using for the marvelous. Choosing one of those. So if it's if you can, I mean, I know you can. I really recommend giving that a try. Like even the darkest red color, I think that will look a lot better um, because there's just too much contrast with the stark white, at least the stark white. Maybe if you got rid of the stark white, um, that would be another option. So one or the other, because you know your character still has black, little black details. So the black might be all right. So just you know experiment with those two. Um, and I think that, uh, that would even work over here too, to uh, let some of that color seep into the Faust, right? Great. But I love all these ornaments. They're gorgeous. And I can't get over how cool the word Faust looks. It looks really awesome. And then let me just look at these real fast again. Yeah. So I think same thing here. If you were to add color up here, it would really just feel more uniform through the whole thing, especially if it was one of the colors from the Marvelous, okay? Over here, this one, I'm not crazy about the wheat touching the letters. I think that it needs a little, the, the letters here need a little bit of room to breathe. So you could bump those down a smidge that they're not touching, and then you may need to um, bump his head down a little bit to send, to recenter him, but that's the only thing. Um, yeah, but I think this one looks really nice. It does look like the Marvelous is not centered on this one. It looks like it's a little to the left and it also doesn't look like it's on a perfect curve, but that may just be because it's not centered, it's making a bit of a um, optical illusion. And let me just look over here. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so if you do have to go in and adjust the curve, then I want you to also pay attention to your kerning between the V and the R and the E and the L, because and and the word the, that's all a bit tight, okay? Um, but that's only if you go in and adjust the curve itself. If you are, if you nudge it over to the right and it looks better, then you don't need to go in and adjust that track, that kerning. All right, cool. So then you'll have to also adjust that here, okay? Great. Thank you so much, Alejandro. Next up is Daisy. Daisy's character is Valeria. She is a marksman. And uh, this turned out really pretty. I really like it. I like the ornament in the V and the, um, the rise of the text, as well as kind of making it smaller near the end, adds some beautiful perspective. Let's go ahead and see the rest here. The comp looks great. And that's very cute. I like the little button idea. So with it, um, I think that we can, I think that the V needs to be just nudged up a bit so that it's not touching the A, only because none of your other letters are touching, So and there is room to nudge it up a bit. So if you could just separate those there, it'll look great. And I would like you to also consider adding an additional drop shadow. Um, it could either be black or it could be another color from your color palette. Just give it a try. If you're not into it, I totally understand. But I think it will add just a little bit more. Um, it'll add more dimension and a little more decoration. And I think it'll work out really nicely, okay? But this is really cute. I love how simple it is. I love this arrow down here, very clever. And I think that this, um, the little ornament in the letter uh, helps to sort of relate it to the marksman and makes it almost um, reminiscent of medieval marksmen like uh, Robin Hood and Maid Marian. Did you know that in the book Maid Marian was actually just as skilled as Robin Hood and not like a little helpless damsel like the fox in the Disney version <laughs> of Robin Hood? So um, your Valeria makes me think of the original Maid Marian and I love it. So way to go, thank you so much. Next up is Melanie. Melanie's act is the feline acrobat. They are cats that do acrobatics. And this turned out so great. I really love that you um, you uh, resided on this one as your final. I think it's beautiful. I love the little ornaments and the, um, 
the stretching cat fits in so nicely. This is so cool how it comes up and sits on the cat's head. You know what I mean? Uh, it's really beautiful. In the black and white version, the left side is not as heavy as the right side, as you can probably see here. And it's because you chose to um, make your first letters white and all the rest black. So in the black and white version, I recommend either swapping these so that your first letters are filled with black with a white um, drop shadow like the rest of the letters or swapping the cat inverting the cat so that the cat has a white fill um, just just see how if it feels more balanced but that's only in the black and white version because in the colored versions it looks great i don't know what it, i think it's just because of the the heavy contrast in the black and white version but this one totally works for me um, and you added some whiskers which is really nice too so uh yeah let me keep going here and these comps are really wonderful really cute i love the ticket it looks awesome and I love these. I would absolutely wear the shirt because I love cats a little too much. <laughs> and yeah, I think it's really fun with the whiskers. So I would also add the whiskers to the black and white version. It's so cute. It really gives it that extra little clever touch, you know? So wonderful work. Thank you so much, Melanie. Next up is Mike. Uh, Mike did the Exalted Moonbeam. And I tell you, Mike, your presentation got cut off for some reason. Um, the, the video, so I didn't get to see the whole thing. It says that it is 15 minutes long, but it, for some reason the recording stops after about a minute, at, right after your dramatic introduction. So that's all right. Um, this logo is really cool. I love this illustration is super Victorian with this stippling in here. It's really a lovely touch. Um, I like that you added a little bit of red in the eye to pull from the red in the word moonbeam. And this is so neat. I, that's, I love it. I love it. Love it. I love the shading. I like this um, textured, you know, uh, edge there. And the I like that the shape of the moon feels very organic, you know, since that line isn't perfectly straight and, you know, computer made like very digital. It looks really wonderful. Let's look at the rest here. So we've got these iterations. It looks even better in black and white. It's awesome. Really good, but I do love this color palette. This is really nice too with this light stroke. Um, I'm like, I'm not a fan of strokes and um, putting strokes on text usually, but I think it's working really well with the Victorian theme uh, it, because that's, you know, um, it's just really characteristic of that time. So it looks really good. Yeah, this looks great. Just looking at a few more things here. Yeah, your kerning and tracking looks really great. I love it, love it. Okay, let's see, what's your comps here? Great, good job, good job, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Beautiful, wonderful, I love seeing that. This looks awesome, <laughs> really good there. And this looks really great. This is a fun, um, a fun little mock-up here with just this stuff in color and the rest of it. And like a nice uh, sepia tone looks great. And this is a really cool comp too. I like that it looks um, embossed. Really beautiful. Nice work, way to go, Mike. Next up is Elizabeth with the Lucky Ginkgo, who's the psychic. And this turned out so beautiful. I really like this style, it's really neat. It's like um, the style of clouds here with the swirl inside is mixing um, like Japanese, uh, illustration with this vintage, I'm sorry, with the uh, <laughs> mixing Japanese illustration with Victorian font so beautifully. I think it's really neat because you have this beautiful curls on this font that you chose, especially in the G there, and it's spreading throughout the, um, the clouds so nicely. And then this, it's a lovely juxtaposition with the ginkgo leaves. I love the color palette. I think that outlining the ginkgo leaves was a really nice touch there with the white. It, it looks it's so good, it looks really good. And I like the heaviness of the black fill in the moon. Um, it really marries well with just the black and the type. So really lovely work, turned out really great. This font is so cool, I love it, really nice. Yeah, so I'm not, I'm not crazy about this one right here, this isn't, doesn't feel like the right era to me. 
even if it is a, a Victorian font, it's just not reading as well as, um, as this font that you chose for the final. That's reading way better. It looks a lot more, uh, a lot more Victorian. Even this one here, yeah, that one works nicely. I think it looks great. So here's your mock-ups, beautiful, really nice. I'm thinking on this one, that black does get lost on that dark background. Um, so I would swap these two colors or um, because we need Lucky Ginkgo Psychic to be uh, number one in the, in the visual hierarchy there. And because of the, um, the contrast between the yellow and the dark maroon color, we're seeing tarot cards packs first. So tarot cards packs can take a step down in the hierarchy. You can make those black. It'll balance nicely. And you can make Lucky Ginkgo a brighter color to make that be the first thing that our eye is drawn to. Okay. Way to go. Thank you so much, Bitsy. Next up is Anna. Anna's uh, group is the Blind Faith Circus, and it turned out so great. It's very, um, very much like a lot of the new Victorian style logos that we're seeing on products, and it's it's just balanced so beautifully. I do love this blue with that gold. Like you said, it, it is the perfect pop, and it looks fantastic. Fantastic. I love the beautiful rise in the text. I love the circle around the bee with all this Ornament is gorgeous. I love the cannon. Way to go. And then having your little circus tent down there is really cool. You really married um, all of the little extra ideas that were in your sketches perfectly here. It looks fantastic. Let's go ahead and look at the next things here. There's your comps. I would wear this all day long. I love it so much, so much. Yeah, you did a really great, great job balancing all that ornament. It's a lot of ornament. And, but it doesn't look like too much. It looks perfect. Really, really good. I admire this. I love it. Um, so the only thing that I recommend is right here. This is so nitpicky, but I think this line needs to be gold there. I know I'm, I'm so annoying like that, but I really do think that that's the only, the only place where it's just, uh, it's a strange transition. It'll make more sense if the gold continues to that curl. That's it though. That's it. Easy peasy, right? So way to go, it looks fantastic. Thank you so much, Anna. Next up is Lane. Lane has the Dalmatian Stardust Circus. And so um, your PDF that you turn in is just this great black and white version. Uh, so we're, I'm gonna also show snippets from your video because I think everybody needs to see it in color and see your comps. Um, but it turned out really beautifully. I, I do love the variation of the um, lines in the middle. I think for the black and white version, you could go straight black and white for this center fill, or you could go um, uh, black and gray, this light gray, or you could go white and the dark gray. Uh, so having the middle gray, I'd say, let's say this is like a 20 or 30% gray is the lighter gray, and then the darker gray is like maybe 50 or 60% gray. Um, Having that, those two grays next to each other, there's just not enough contrast. And it makes the word that's the most important sort of become passoverable by the eye. Because when you have not very much contrast in, in, in any kind of composition, the eye just kind of passes it and looks for the more contrasty area, like these this double drop shadow and the star up here. Okay, so just for the black and white version, I think you need a little more contrast in the main word circus. You may also find that when you scale this down, um, this is actually your horizontal version, the long, the wide version. Uh, so if you were to scale this down, we might lose the word stardust a bit, but, um, but I'm happy that you made the other more vertical version. So let's take a look at those real fast. So here's your video. I just have the sound turned off, so um, it may uh, move your mouse around. <laughs> but yeah, it turned out really pretty. And I do like the yellow star um, and these color variations. Do you see how on the one on the right, because that cream and kind of magenta color have a higher contrast, it doesn't get quite as lost. This So you're just jumping back and forth in your presentation real fast. So there we go. 
So this is your vertical version and Dalmatian Stardust does look better at a larger scale there. So that will scale down nicely. And here's some of your comps. And then um, we're gonna see them in a minute. On, so on the one on the right, you know, you can see that your black drop shadow gets lost there, but that's okay. Um, Cause I don't see you printing that much. This looks really good. I love this yellow on the purple. And the one on the left is my favorite color combination on a light background. So it turned out beautifully. I think the cut, the paper, the, um, sorry, the cu uh, cup one, because it's so small scale, you should use your vertical version of that, but with this color com combination, okay? So you're gonna have the Dalmatian Stardust and the star be larger um, so that we don't have Dalmatian Stardust get lost, okay? Really great work, thank you so much. Next up is Sophia, and Sophia did Willow the Arrow, which is an archer, a female archer. And um, this turned out really cool. I love this letter mark. It's so neat uh, with the bow in the middle. And um, I like how the arrow point is like shining almost like a candle wick. It, it's really gorgeous. And I believe you went with the middle one. Let's see. Sorry, I skipped ahead. Come on. There we go. Yeah. So I do like the uh, your font here a lot. It is a bit small in comparison with your symbol. Um, and the arrow is very tiny, even at this scale. So as you can see on your cup, it gets lost. So I would almost separate these on something small like a cup and just have your W be your mark that stands alone. And then on the other side, have Willow the arrow nice and large so that we can read it. And you can also incorporate these colors then into the text. And so it's not just black text. It could be this beautiful maroon and this lovely blue that you have. Um, something this size looks better with that text because we can read it. I would recommend making Willow the arch, uh, sorry, Willow the arrow, this same yellow here, uh, because we need that to stand out. That is, you know, the most, it's really the most important thing in the information hierarchy. So adding more contrast by making that font a lighter color will be, will draw the eye down there. It'll balance the design beautifully and uh, it'll make us know the person's name, right? So um, yeah, so I think that at this scale, this text is just a bit too small. Uh, so just, you know, reconsider that we need to read Willow the Arrow more than we need to read the symbol itself, okay? Great, but it's beautiful, it's really lovely design, and I love the color combination. It turned out really cool, it's perfect. Next up is Chanel. Chanel had Lady Rowena the Oracle, and I believe you went with this center one here, which is so beautiful. I love these dangling star and moon here. The ornament is gorgeous, it's just gorgeous. I love how it fills in this space here. I really like that you played with scale with the word lady and the. You've got your little eye incorporated in there, it feels like a lot of ornament, but you balanced it beautifully and it's not too much. This one over here is pretty cool too, for sure. I really like that too. Um, but let's keep going. And this is the black and white versions. And here's the, um, here's the comps. And look, you went really big with your design on your shirt. I think it looks really cool. And uh, it's nice with the, with the yellow on the inside too. It got little like reversible shirt almost. <laughs> it looks really nice uh, balancing with the yellow of the text. And I love the contrast on that super dark background. It's really beautiful. Um, yeah, I'm trying to see, I think these popcorn buckets are dark blue. They're so dark, they're almost black. I love it, I love it. I think it's really neat. It's very moody. And I do like this orangey yellow color, it's perfect. It looks really great. And I like that you made the moon and the star the same color and, as well as the eyes on the inside. It's nice, really pretty. Way to go, Chanel, woo! Next up is Therese. Therese has the Lunar Leapers. They are acrobats and this turned out so cool. I love this moon uh, Victorian illustration. It's awesome, really cool. I love his face and this profile. Uh, with like his mustache and beard is so rad. <laughs> I love this style of shading, these beautiful clouds and that they're just 
a hint of the clouds. It looks really lovely. This wrapping around looks really nice. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the next version. Great. Looks good, looks good. And their names are Essie and Amos. That looks nice. All right, and let's see how it turned out here. Okay, so I do have to say that we don't ever want to use one letter for two words. It's just, uh, it, it's too hard for the reader to kind of decipher and it leaves them with a bad taste in their mouth. I know that's like a really weird thing to say, but it's the truth. So I recommend dropping in a second L and then just um, readjusting where lunars and leapers are going to sit. Uh, but please trust me on this. You need a second L, okay? So what you could do is bump up lunar up here and then put in your second L to kind of sit inside. So it could be a smaller scale L for leapers. And if you don't like that, uh, you could try overlapping your Ls. Something, you know, I think either one will work. You have, you've already got such a beautiful font and you've got these great curves on here that by just adding that second L, it'll make it, it'll look really cool. I promise, I promise. Um, and I like your addition of Essie and Amos and the tiny word, the, it looks really good. I wouldn't go with this as a um, as an option. We don't ever need to reverse that symbol or mirror it. Um, having it stay on the left-hand side is going uh, is going to create more brand recognition. The more consistent that symbol is, and even by just mirroring it, it breaks that consistency, okay? So keep it always on the left side because it looks good. Let's see what else we got. Yeah, and this is neat too. I love this ligature here. I love a ligature. I'm a sucker for a ligature, ligature so it looks really lovely. And this banner is really pretty too. There seems to be a line right here. Oh, and you've got a beautiful ligature with the R and the S. If you've got a line on this side, go ahead and put a line on the other side. Go ahead and balance that out, okay? Looks really great. I love these fonts so much. And uh, this popcorn bucket is really cool. I love the stars and this circle here. I think that's a really lovely touch. And this is a really neat idea. Looks fantastic. I love moon delights, really cute. So when you fix that double L, then you'll, you'll have to redo these, but I don't think it'll take you very long. All the hard work is done. <laughs> Thanks so much. Next up is Samari. Samari has masculine illusions. And um, Samari's character is actually a real live person. Uh, so um, this is doing great justice to that person. So very nice. It's really pretty. I love how this turned out. It's like a sun. It's, it's just really cool. And all this ornament and shading is gorgeous. I love it. It's so nice. It's so nice. I really like the um, symmetry of it as well. And um, the beautiful, this lig ligature here is really nice. Uh, as well as the double L looks beautiful. I love this color palette a lot. So just a few things that I recommend on this is that there is some areas where your um, your tracking is just a tiny bit funky. One of those is this E. So um, with the space, the gap here, and I know it's a ligature. Uh, I'm wondering if you can nudge it a bit to the right and just see how it looks. I don't want it to mess with this K tail there. So um, I don't know. It just feels very tight right here with the SKE. And there's no reason for the SKE to be mushed together. You know, it's not like a word inside of a word. Like if it was she or something and you were trying to emphasize like this female character, it's not like that, right? Um, this also feels very tight over here. So I would nudge the I to the left a bit. You can have these L's sitting on each other. But the, with the eye there, it's almost creating like a rectangle. It's so tight. Um, and then just go through and let's zoom in a bit. There we go. Go through and just double check the rest of your uh, tracking. It looks really good. I understand that you want your letters touching. I can see that that is intentional. Um, so if you, but there's areas down here in illusion illusions where they're touching and then they're not touching, not touching, not touching, not touching. You know what I mean? So the U through the S are not touching each other, but then we got these all huddled together. So that's where we got to uh, keep it consistent. 
And then we have these black diamonds on the side. And I know that you were referencing diamonds on a playing card. Um, I think that they are a bit too wide. So I recommend making them a little skinnier. Uh, they can be taller and skinnier to make more of a diamond shape as opposed to a, a rotated square shape. You know what I mean? You could even sort of mess with the um, points to bring in this curve here that you have on this beautiful circular shape around the top and it might tie it in even better. Right now it's just a bit too ge geometric compared with all the other more organic shapes throughout, okay? And then the last thing is these lines on the side with the rounded edges. I recommend revisiting those and changing the stroke style so that they're more like these here, um, like pointy on one end, um, as you can see in your strokes, I mean, in your uh, these swirls over here. I think it'll look even better and less, um, less digitized okay it'll look a little more organic like it was drawn with a pen so let's go ahead and check these out looks awesome looks great and that looks really beautiful so if you do change your logo a bit then see this looks better when it doesn't have the drop shadow you can see this the spacing between and that looks okay so i think it's just because you have that drop shadow which i do love the drop shadow we're getting a little lost in some of the ligatures, okay? All right, great. And last but not least is Sabrina. This is Sabrina's um, human horoscope character. And um, Sabrina, you had some really pretty uh, details right here in these ornamental, we'll call them, I'm sorry, decorative fonts that you created here. And I think you, and I know you liked it, you mentioned it in your presentation. So I think you were onto something and you're not really feeling this version that much. So one of the reasons that I think it's not quite um, Victorian is because they didn't really use uh, gradients like that back then. If they created a gradient, it was made with stippling and shading and like cross hatching, that kind of more, uh, you know, pen, pen drawn kind of shading. And so um, instead of this beautiful, perfectly seamless, illustrator gradient <laughs> that we've uh, come to know and love. So I think that if you um, change these two H's because they are so wide compared to the rest of your font here, there's room to add decoration inside of them, okay? And then um, there might even be room to add a little decoration in your two stars. And so when you look at decorative fonts, I'd like you to take a look at, let me scooch back because I think it was in here. Look at even something like this, you know, just these little, these half decorations or more like this where you have um, decoration that is following the shape of the letter, okay? So in your example here you've got these um the fish and you mentioned like the pitcher of water and things like that you could just make the scale smaller and then sort of mirror them pick one or two things out of there and mirror them uh to fill in you could add another inner um kind of drop shadow like a stroke on the inside that looks like it's receding down you know just play with those h's like you they, you've got they're almost like big blank canvases. You don't really need to add a lot of any more in um, illustration, sorry, any more ornament to the smaller text. It's going to get lost in those thinner, um, thinner stems. But you've got a lot of room in these big H's. And so like, let's make those H's super intentional. You know what I'm saying? And then also balance them in the stars, whatever kind of illustrations you come up with. You could even mess with these little guys in the O's too. Uh, whatever you put in those diamonds, stick them down there in those diamonds. Just see how it works, okay? And then I'm okay with, you mentioned your black and white version, um, having this light gray on your top, on the top there. And that's totally fine with me. I'm, it doesn't need to be completely black and white. It can be uh, black, white, and a, a scale of gray there, okay? So let's look at your um, t-shirts look good. And so you'll have to go back in, at least on these two, and change those, uh, the fonts once you change your 
I'm sorry, change the logo, right? Update the logo in those and same with these. And there may even be a little room to go just a tiny bit bigger on these mugs, but if you're not into it, that's okay. You don't have to. <laughs> you could also take out your double H's once they're, you know, more ornate or whatever you decide to do with them and have the double H's become a, um, a letter symbol, you know, and that'll look really cool. Those can be like huge on one side and then on the other side have the full, the two words um, all together. So one mug could show the one side with the large decorative H's and then the other one could just be the human horoscope updated logo. Okay, great work. So thank you all so much. You did such a fantastic job. I know your posters are gonna be amazing. Don't forget to update your newest version of your logo on your posters and mailers and postcards as well. Thanks so much.